In this video we'll look at some of the wall types available with the default installation and the framing rules associated with those wall types. To get started, I right click to access the contextual mouse, then select Insert Wall. A wall dialog appears that allows us to select from different wall types such as exterior framing, interior framing, as well as from some non-framing architectural wall types. We'll focus on the framing wall types. So let's select the exterior wall type and select its first wall, the 350S 162-33 exterior bearing wall. In this portion of the dialog, we see the materials and framing details that are set to be used for this wall. The default values for framing base height and frame height are coming from the Z-level heights that we set earlier during the project setup. Framing detail is the name of a file that's used when processing the framing rules. Framing 2D hatch controls the color of the wall in the 2D layout. Wall.fill is a brown color as shown in the preview picture to indicate that this is an exterior bearing wall. You can also select from different available colors. Panel label is the prefix that will be used when we generate our panels. Exterior corner type, interior corner type, and backer type are the three details that we had set in project parameters. We can choose to use the default values or supersede them by making new selections. Panel ends is the detail used when we have two panels that are butt against each other. You can choose a single stud, double stud, or a boxed out tube. The free ends detail selection is applied to a wall with free ends, not connecting to another panel. Panel edge gap and sheathing edge gap are tolerance values, so you can choose to shorten your panels by some amount in order to leave a little bit of space to fit the panels together. If you want to shorten your panels a quarter of an inch, you can also shorten your sheathing to match your framing. Or, if you want to shorten your sheathing by a bit more, you can choose a different value. You can also type the value you want in these fields. The horizontal bracing control allows you to select the material as well as the rule for the heights of the bracing. You can select either an on center spacing, whether it's at half, thirds, or quarters the height of the wall, some specific rule, or you can specify specific heights where you want those bracings to occur. You have similar controls for the horizontal blocking. Service hole heights is used if you're going to be exporting your studs to a roll former that has hole punching capabilities. You can specify the hole heights as well as the hole diameter. Top track type is a detail selection for the top track assembly. You can select a standard single track or some other built up assembly. The next four selections control the materials used in your top track detail and will be applied only if applicable to the assembly. The bottom track type is also a detail selection for your bottom track assembly. The bottom track and the bottom L or stud are, if applicable, the materials that go into the bottom track assembly. Studs is the material used for your on center studs. The actual size displays the actual dimensions of those studs. You can control whether you're using single, double, or multiple studs, what your stud spacing is, stud start from, the left end of the panel, the right end of the panel, middle of the panel, or from both ends of the panel and work your way in towards the middle. If you're starting from the center of your panel, you can choose to mirror the studs. You can double up the studs on the center. And then we have a tolerance value for shortening your studs. The studs will already be shortened to account for the thickness of the top and bottom tracks, but then you can add an additional shortening value here. 
You can control the orientation of your studs and select one of the configurations shown here. Exterior house wrap, insulation and interior vapor barrier are materials that will be estimated based on the square footages of the walls. Now going to the next page, frame openings, we can see the rules and properties used when framing out doors and windows. Based on the width of the opening, you can have the framing adjust automatically to use one of three different sets. Each set allows you to specify the top header detail, the opening header detail, the sill detail, and all the materials that go into those. You can also specify the jam and king quantities and materials. You can also box out your jams and kings by selecting to cap them with tracks. Down in the bottom, you can control if you're going to be using cripples above and below the openings, and what the materials will be for those cripples, as well as the studs above and below the openings. In Vertex BD syntax, cripples are the ones that will be placed up against the jams, and the studs above and below are the ones that will follow the on center spacing. Here we have controls for jam and king orientation and whether or not you want to line your openings with a lumber material by selecting to add rough bucks. The next page allows us to control the exterior finish materials and sheathing materials. Here you can select what materials you want to use for your exterior finish and whether or not you want to use a wainscot material and then we can add up to two layers of interior and exterior sheathing. You can also choose if you want to show the sheathing on the panel shop drawing. The overlap values control how far the sheathing will extend above the top track and below the bottom track. All of these property settings can be customized for each wall type. You can create your own wall types and save them in a new library. You can also save them as presets within a preset library. 